Hey, Justin, before you get started, I've been on this show for a year and a half now. Why I'm not still in the intro? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> and you're watching the Bama Standard after a week hiatus. <laughs> no comment. Go ahead and hit Watch that like and subscribe button. Hey, listen. Why does Steve have on that, that crop top, that halter top over there? <laughs> I bet he got it tied up at the waist, too. He would get it. <laughs> you shamed him off the air before we could even get started. <laughs> go ahead, Justin, but I'm still salty. You're still salty? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. If you're here in the chat, let us know how you feel. If you're watching the replay, get in the comment section. I'm your host, Justin <laughs> Riley. With me, as always, is a very disgruntled Bo Scarborough. <laughs> 1999 All-SEC linebacker Marvin Constant. <laughs> Comedy legend Steve Brown with a halter top. And the senior yes. analyst of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, Stephen M. Smith. Welcome in, everybody. Steve Brown dressed like Yo. one of the cheerleaders from the longest yard. <laughs> 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 and you, he, you said one of the cheerleaders from the longest yard. You remember that? Yeah. Which one? Which one is he though? Which one is he? <laughs> the second one. The real oh, hey man, let me tell y'all something, man. I, I wore Tracy this Morgan character. I, I wore this tonight because I just got done working out, man. Look, look, look at all the results for Marvin Constant book. Now this other muscle, it ain't developed yet, but this one right here. We'll, we'll switch hands, Steve. It's, it's, it's like it's like it's like one muscle at a time. Yo, hey, uh, around the neck muscle was too tight, so you had to cut to try to make a V neck. <laughs> no, nah, he was trying to get it over that head. He had to open it up to get it down. What you mean? <laughs> hey, man, oh, yeah, I forgot you got a nog, and the fans just never seen your head from the side. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder why am I a part. Of this this abusive podcast, I I, I just want to know why. Hey, am man, I serious? Because you haven't been on in umpteen years. I hey man, I'm time. I'm back. You know what, man? Speaking of umpteen years, we finally got our prayers answered. Marvin, we got our prayers answered. He's gone. Hey man, you know you know somebody asked. He's me. gone. Somebody said, what you going to do with the fire, Pete Murray? <laughs> <laughs> How much revenue are you losing, Marvin, from this, from your prayers being answered here? I mean, you got a whole you, line of clothes. You, what do you mean, man? It's called a tax loss. Hey, listen, man. You don't get smart not to be smart. <laughs> hey, okay? man. Right. Hey. <laughs> hey, it's going to be it's gonna be so many kids from third world countries wearing their shirts. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> hey, and, and we'll write it off as a tax loss, and we're going to call it a day. You know what I'm saying? But 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 here, here's the reality of it, though, man. You know, a lot of people have been asking me about this. You know, honestly, being so serious about this, the way it went down, you know, we first hear about the rumors of Pete going to Ole Miss, which that is a step down to leave Alabama and then go to Ole Miss. So whether people want to realize it or not, yeah, you're still defensive coordinator, but I guarantee you that's a step down. I guarantee you. No coach wants to go from Alabama to Ole Miss. That ain't the natural progression of coaching and say, I want to go from Alabama to Ole Miss. That's not how it works. Hey, but man, it's, it's something else, it's something hold on, else hold on, going hold on. on. I guarantee you it was one of those situations where it was a mutual split, whereas mm. Nick tells you, if you don't leave, I'm going to fire you, so you better off just leaving and save face. So I think that that's the way – because it happened very quickly because you got to realize – in his press conference prior to the Sugar Bowl, oh, I love Alabama. I'm not going anywhere. I plan on being here. I'm you still know, on he, the contract. Huh? Uh, he I'm says, still I'm still on the contract. Right, but he talked it up real well to only be going to Ole Miss a matter of weeks later. So I, I think it was one of those situations to where it was, hey, either you're going to go take another job or I'm going to fire you. Which one do you want to do? <laughs> And you're not the first person to actually say that. Josh Pate actually. And you know what else, though? And you know what else, though? And, and it goes back to the agent. Jimmy Sexton <laughs> represents so many coaches, man. People don't realize. Oh, my God. People <laughs> don't realize. <laughs> Steve. 
Hey man, I'm feeling confident. I've been reading Marvin's book. Don't worry about it, man. Go ahead. Yes, here, you've go reached our, our live feed on Steve Brown's OnlyFans. Go ahead and hit that <laughs> the donate button. <laughs> All right. So, but back to <laughs> Jimmy Sexton. If you know anything about college coaches, Jimmy Sexton represents almost every coach in the SEC. So Jimmy can actually manipulate what coach goes where because he controls everybody's movement. He represents Kirby. He represents Nick. He represents Dan Mullen. Jimmy represents everybody. So he represents Lane Giffen as well. That's what I'm saying. So when you represent all the coaches, it's easy to to manipulate and move coaches around. So I think it was one of those situations where it came into play where Nick really wanted Pete to go on, and because Jimmy's involved, because he represents Nick, he represents Lane, it's an easy transition because Jimmy controls so much of college football in terms of coaching. People don't realize how right. much of a stamp that Jimmy Sexton really has on the sport of college football. Fun fact, that's the reason why um, Coach Cochran couldn't go to Ole Miss because Jimmy, like you just said, stopped the whole operation. And what people don't know is, is that uh, Coach Cochran went to Georgia unexpectedly for everybody in the building. And that's how he ended up at Georgia. Coach Cochran wanted to be an on-field coach and not in the weight room. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Jimmy pulls all the strings, man. Jimmy Sexton is truly the man running college football that people have no – most people have no clue who Jimmy Sexton is. But Jimmy well, Saxon is actually running the SEC as a whole. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know, that's what the that's what the country is is, you know, everything is built around now, sex, money, and drugs. So I get it. I, I understand. <laughs> so, so basically, Marvin, what you're saying is uh you're saying that uh the commissioner Greg Sankey's a puppet. Pretty much because Jimmy Jimmy represents all the coaches. So if he doesn't want a coach to go somewhere, it's easy for him to negotiate a manipulate situation to get that coach where he wants him to be. Because again, Jimmy controls all the coaches, man. All right, so let me ask you this. All right, so <laughs> now that we have that, he's gone. Well, you know what? I'm gonna leave that question up to to uh Justin. Justin, I already know what you're about to ask. No, go ahead. <laughs> Who's the yeah, next you- coach? Well, that kind of segues into Stephen M. Smith's segment. Stephen M. Smith, you know, you and I have talked uh, a lot here recently. We had a show Sunday night, and then you had yours last night. Who are the hottest names? Who's on your short list right now? It's four Stephen guys. It's, it's four guys. It's simple. It's Glenn Schumann. It's Jim Leonard. It's Jeremy Pruitt. And it's Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Lake, them four. Uh, the fans want Pruitt. The fans have been screaming for Pruitt since the news came out. Uh, Glenn Schumann started off his career at Alabama as a GA, uh, solid national championship under Nick Saban and Kirby Smart. Jim Leonard, really fiery guy at Wisconsin, but he wants to coach in the NFL. So yeah. how long would Jim would, would Jim Leonard be willing to stay at Alabama <laughs> to the NFL come open? And then Jimmy Lake, who was a beast at Washington as a defensive coordinator, his name kind of simmered down after it didn't work out for him as a head coach for the Huskies. But those would be the four, Schumann, Lake, Leonard, and Pruitt. I got to go Pruitt all day long because here's the reality of it. We know nobody's going to touch Pruitt for a head coaching job for at least three to five seasons. So that'll give us some level of stability as we move throughout this process. Other guys like Schumann and some of these other guys, you might have them for a season or two before someone comes and takes them and gives them a head coaching job. Now, we all say that Jeremy has a lot of baggage, but that baggage is also what will keep Jeremy and Tusk loose longer than pretty much anybody else we hire as a defense. But also, but also Marvin, but, yes, I understand, Marvin. I mean, Lane Kiffin had baggage. It worked out. Steve, and, but you know what? You know, you know something? I'm, I'm with you on that too, Marvin. You know why? Another thing I'm with is that – Je- I don't know about the other coaches. I've heard of them, but we all know that Jeremy Pruitt is tested and proven big time. But I will big also say, I will also say this: Coach Saban, from from being on the leadership team and being one of the guys that um met with Coach Saban regularly, he's not the type of guy that would hire someone because of everybody want him to do it. You know, right? What I mean? Because of an example, all the um, back when we was going through the OC thing, when uh, 
Lane Kiffin had left, and then Sark had got the job up in uh, Atlanta. And, you know, all the um, offensive player had a meeting with Coach Saban. And, you know, we basically said that we wanted um, the guy from Maryland. Um, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. Um, who that? Loxley. Yeah, Lo- Coach Loxley. All the players. Man, the one that threw the game against, against Clemson? Yeah, him. Yeah. No, he didn't throw the glands against Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but, you know, all the players was, you know, wanted to have um, Colossi as the OC. So I was the last player to meet. I was the, the last player to meet with Coach Saban. So, you know, uh, he he looked at me and he said, Bo, because, I, I, you know, I never said that I wanted Coach Loxley to be the OC. You know what I'm saying? I, I just had to meet because I was on the off. Like, like I tell you guys, I never speak on coaches. So – and then, you know, he told me, he said, Bo, I never hire a guy that who everyone wants me to hire. I always hire the guy who I think best fit the situation and the um, and a guy that gets along with the players and who knows what they're doing and how to run the system. Jeremy? Oh, what's the system about? Jeremy? Jeremy. <laughs> and Jeremy is one of them. I mean, you know, he and Schumann a, as well. Right. But and there was I think so many people saying to hire Pruitt, hire Pruitt, hire Pruitt. And, and from me, me with Cole Saban, I, I just think that Cole Saban would say, I'm not going to hire a guy that everybody want me to hire. And then it'll be like something that, you know, they told me to do. But well, it's not that, so but, much. but he's proven it. But, but that yeah, was, he's proven but it. That was, but that was seven years ago. So, his, but you know, his mind may have changed over the years as the game has changed. But because Bo, but he's Bo, Bo, yeah. he, but Bo, yeah. he proved that he proved that when he hired when he hired O'Brien and he hired uh, uh, Golding, he proved that 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 he hired no, these guys that nobody wanted. He but, wanted but, to hire. But you know, but here's the reality of it, though. You know, if if he does hire Schumann and one of the other guys, you're gonna get one, maybe two seasons out of them. Before they're off to their next job, because Schumann is going to be a head coach. That's a given. It's just a matter of time before it actually happens. Again, with Pruitt, you know you're going to get at least three to five seasons out of Jeremy. You're going to get a solid coach who understands and knows the system, knows the checks, knows the adjustments, knows how to fire up those kids, and he's one hell of a recruiter. So you're going to be able to check all the boxes with Jeremy and the fact that you'll be able to have him longer than you would any of those other coaches, I can pretty much guarantee you. Hey, hey Marvin, I don't mean to cut you off. I don't mean to cut you off, but I want y'all to I want y'all to look at this, and I want y'all to pay attention to this from this point on. When when Justin has that pin up like that, hold it up, pin, hold it up, Justin. That means <laughs> shut up. It's his turn. So yeah, yeah. I, I peep that. See, that's something y'all don't y'all don't pay attention to. Y'all just be talking. But when 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 he put that pin up like that, that means shut the hell up. All right, go ahead, Justin. <laughs> okay, see what you were saying, Marvin. Uh, I was done. Uh, he's still he's still salty because I, I hadn't gotten the intro yet. We're, we're gonna get okay. you the intro, Bo. I don't have a, I, don't, I don't have a buzzer to cut you off yet because TDA hasn't given us the money for it yet. But I, I do have a point. That but I'm gonna come in. Hold on, Justin. I'm gonna come in um, before I forget. You know, my mind is gone, is bad from getting hit so many times, but. <laughs> <laughs> to piggyback off what Mar what Marvin said that these guys come and stay three to five years is okay. So look at this, Alabama. We've been successful for fifteen years. Every country, every program in the country wants to be just like Alabama. So soon as it as soon as a job come opening, all all the colleges want somebody from Alabama, and because they want their program. <laughs> In the same way, because they want to know the philosophy of what we are doing in Alabama. How are, the exception, how are we winning these games? Bo, and they think, hold on, and hold on, Marvin. Hold on, and Bo, they, hold on, hold on, Marvin. On. And they think, and they think, if they get a coach from Alabama, either a DC or an OC, and they know these two coaches meet with Coach Saban regularly on the outside of position coaches, they think that they know the whole philosophy of the thing. But the thing Bo, is, it doesn't. Be, the only person that really knows is Kirby Smart. Bo, why did nobody, nobody, nobody touch and prove it? But ain't nobody touching Pruitt, so we ain't got to worry about that. Why did nobody hire Pete, Bo? That's my only 
like I told you before, and I've been saying it since um, week one, I do not speak on coaches. The pen is up. The pen is up. The pen is up. <laughs> My point, Bo, and it goes back to a little bit of what you were saying. I think at this point in Saban's career, he wants to be the CEO. He doesn't want a guy that he's going to stand over and teach and implement his system to. So he's going to bring a guy in who understands what he wants right off the bat, a Glenn Schumann. Then you got a Jeremy Pruitt. Jeremy Pruitt doesn't have to have much instruction. He knows the Bama standard. He's standing over those players, making sure they understand everything. This allows Saban to be freed up to do what he does as a CEO. So I feel, I feel like it, with his decision-making, this is what he's going to look to first. Jim Leonard, yes, absolutely great guy. Does he know what Saban wants? Is he play? Is he coach under Saban? No. Another thing is, like y'all said, the NFL is going to come a calling. He's already on several teams' short list. So he may be there one year, and he's gone. We're back to the same position again. I think if you don't hire Jeremy Pruitt as a defensive coordinator, he comes in as a position coach, safeties coach, is available right now. Bring him back in <laughs> that way and have Schumann be the guy. And like you said, Marvin, in a couple of years, Glenn Schumann's probably going to be hired as a defensive coordinator or some defense coordinator, a head coach somewhere else. And then we ease Pruitt right back into that role. So it all kind of works itself out. Yeah. Or you just go get Bo Davis, Lance Thompson, Schumann, and Pruitt. Ooh, ooh. That's that, that's that's a coaching all star. So right you're there. saying fire Freddie Roach and the rest of those guys? Hell yeah! No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say I didn't say fire. <laughs> I said I said it would be nice. Hey man, hey, hey it bro, would be great. Bro, it would be see? great if we got both yeah. days. Nah, nah, did you nah. see how Bo? Did you see how Bo froze up though? Bo was like, uh, uh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, Fred of my list, man, Fred, man, look. Fred and my boy, Fred and my A one said they went look, man. Listen, like, like, oh, like, Fred, that's my guy. Like I tell, like I tell most people, man. Well, I tell a lot of people, man. I'm probably one of the, uh, besides Marvin, I'm probably one of the guys that know all league players from all the way back from 1990 and 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 past my era. You know what I mean? Fred and my guy, man. Freddie, Josh Chapman, um, uh, Upshaw. Dante Hightower, Mark Barron, George Teach, Antonio Latham. Like I know all the Steve you can't Brown. The names right, but he knows them. <laughs> I, I I know them. I, hey, I know I know more players than all of y'all because I I got all the programs in there. I can name them all. <laughs> yeah. Look at the position coaches too. We need Sal Sanceri on the field. Urban Burns. Or hey, consider this. We have a younger Bama guy who was quite a hard hitter at linebacker that's a defensive analyst for Texas right now. Why don't we bring Nico Johnson back as a, as a linebacker's coach? Well, maybe he need to get Jimmy Sexton to be his agent. Shit. The Mafia I mean, King? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> 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 I said Jimmy Sexton, the Mafia King who controls I'm just the, saying, Jimmy controls college football. The machine. I mean, if I were a college coach, I would sign with Jimmy. I know if anybody can get me a job, it's going to be Jimmy because he controls the monopoly of coaches in college football, the SEC. Okay, so this question, this question right here, who who do we get to replace O'Brien? I, I think what Riley's already gone to um to um, I read, he went to Clemson. Clemson. Yeah, where is Jim McElwain? Who? <laughs> Jim McElwain. Back at Colorado uh, State. You mean three yards in the cloud of d dust, Mcelwain? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking in Steve to answer your question. Type of offense that we were running. Steve, say what? To answer no, your not. question, I'm looking at uh, Jeff Levy, who's now at Oklahoma. He previously was at Ole Miss. He was responsible for the success they had against us uh, in 2020. And then also we can look at Joe Brady. Mm. This is the both innovative guys, guys that have a wealth of talent they'd be walking into to coach. So Sorry. what what's that? Oh, I was responding to a comment down on they said no bo, no. <laughs> 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 Just said sorry. But as far as co offensive coordinator, the first thing that I want to see is somebody that can develop quarterbacks. If mm -hmm. you have a a guy who can develop a quarterback, it does no good, but right back in the same situation.
Exactly. And I'm not talking about a guy who just runs one particular system with one only one particular guy, a guy who can adapt according to his personnel. Well, Man. you know, Justin, the problem is with finding a good offensive coordinator is there's very few out there that are that <laughs> good that are available because so many of them get head coaching jobs so fast because that that ability to adapt and be innovative and because everybody wants that high-flying dynamic offense these days. That's why you see so many young offensive coordinators getting head coaching jobs. But you also see a lot of them get fired. Look at Cliff Kingsbury, Cardinals, fired. Sean McVay, he's just trying to decide if he's even going to keep coach. A lot of these guys, they get these jobs so early in life, man, burned that, out. that they're burnt out, man. And, and because it's not the normal natural progression of coaching because most of the time you don't see young guys getting head coaching jobs like this. It's because of how dynamic their offenses are and, and, and how, how, how fast they learn on the fly and their adaptability. That's why you see so many young guys. We have, have you ever seen this many head coaches in college and in the NFL in their thirties? Yeah, you're right. Uh, but you know what, it. man, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this it, j- back to what you were saying, Justin, if Bama does get a uh, offensive coordinator that that can develop a, a quarterback, and one comes in and and he gets his hands on Jalen Miro, it's going to be a problem for everybody. I'm telling you right now, that is pure talent waiting to be developed. It's going to be a problem. Bunt what people are saying about him not throwing and all that. Once he learns how to, plus with his his mobility and his strength. It's going to be a problem. Trust me when I tell you. Back up from the camera, Stephen. I can't. <laughs> Not, I, just, I just did. And that's hey, why man, I think. Did you just did you just call me Stephen? No, I'm, I'm talking about we were talking about Stephen Smith. Stephen M. Smith. Hey, I'm telling you something, man. Hey, Somebody, I don't hey, like when people come. I don't like when people Steve. call me Stephen because Steve. when, when people call me Stephen, my name is Stephen Wayne Brown. It sounds like a serial killer. So just call me Stephen. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Sound like a unibomber. Steve. You didn't see. You didn't see the comment on the bottom of the screen where somebody said, "Back up, Stephen. You look like you're being birthed." <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Marvin. Steven can't see. Uh, Steve can't see the comment because he on his set. He on his boo mobile. <laughs> oh, they were taking. They took a shot at Steven and Smith though. Steve, you gonna take that? Steven and Smith. They say like you like you being birthed over there, man. They said. <laughs> hey, Marvin. Marvin. Marvin, look at this. <laughs> Speaking of Steve, <laughs> Lucian thinks his tankini is too tight. <laughs> hey, man. Why is everybody on me tonight? What was what's, what's I told you why everybody on you? You haven't been on him up 10 years. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you, Steve. I, I, we, I'm gonna see you Saturday night. I was just gonna wait till the end to throw eggs at you, but I guess since you on here already, <laughs> hey Marvin, I, I understand you and a, a group of guys, uh, uh, coming to my show Saturday night. I do understand that, but just know, uh, that night I'm gonna make you famous. That's all I'm gonna say. When are, when are, when are you uh when are you having a show in Dallas again? I don't know, man. I was just in Dallas visiting, so I don't know, man. We we we'll see. I'll let yeah, you know though. You 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 see how messed up you are, Steve. <laughs> you know I live in Dallas, and you ain't even giving me a call. At least Marvin came out here, and we went ate lunch and stuff like that. Marvin, but Marvin wanted to Marvin wanted to borrow money from his gambling debts. <laughs> 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 Hadn't y'all noticed the cry for help every week when he's talking about his <laughs> gambling? <laughs> his I, hey, hey, can, can I, I? I don't know. I don't know if you had this planned or not, uh, Justin, because I haven't spoken with you. But it's also uh, something that's really been bothering me. Uh, and then it's on a serious note about the the kid on the basketball team. That is a sad, sad situation, man. Yeah, we talked about that, man. I say it. Before we, you know, you know, it comes we back on. to this this generation as a whole, man. I've never seen so many kids who didn't fear consequences and repercussions from their decisions. You know, these kids are so desensitized to to violence and and the after effects of what actually happens. You know, when when all of these acts occur, you know, when you turn on the news, especially living here in Atlanta, every day on the news, the first ten minutes is nothing but killing, yep. carjacking, car break ins. This generation has no fear of anything, and it goes back to what we talk about. But it goes back to what we talk about in sports, and it's hard to coach this generation as well. 
because <laughs> they think they know everything, man. And it's hard to coach somebody or to tell somebody who thinks they know everything what to do in any form or, or right. any facet. Because if you think you know everything, why am I going to listen to you? Because that's, that's the mentality that so many of them have. And, so, and for that young man, I think it was a situation where, you know, they probably were out drinking and, you know, his boy gets into it with her. But just let her go on her way. But there's no reason for him to provide him with the gun, because if it's me, I'm not going to give you my gun and then you go commit this crime. Now I'm going down with you. Now, hell, if anything, I'm going to shoot you in your back and let you go <laughs> tell you. So, so. So so what's so so what's Steve Stephen? Do you know the actual story on this? Because I, I I'm I'm still confused on it. Well well I heard literally I had just left from on the script from getting me a messy uh a messy fry and then stay away from Quick Grill. I went to Quick Grill. The Quick Grill was lying longer than 15 streets, so I went to the back. So the dude who owned it, he went to high school with me. I was like, hey man, let me get me two messes on um, fry man before I go. You know what I'm saying? So I tried to get him for the books. He was like, no, nah, you good. So I I, I I leave. Soon as I go to my uh, get to my, my boy house, he said, Man, you ain't Jay on uh, here that on uh, shooting on the on the university. I said, What shooting I just left from dying now? And then he was he was like, Man, a um basketball player shot a girl because she didn't want to give him her number. You know what I mean? Mm. Girl was with her boyfriend. That's who drove her to the hospital, and um and her best you know and her her girlfriend and you know told her mother the story of what happened because she had just got off the phone with her mom. Damn. Yeah. So 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 who shot the get the girl the basketball player or the friend? The They're friend. Saying the friend did. Yeah. They, so they, why are they, they being charged? But, but why is he being charged? Because he gave murder? him the gun. He gave, he gave him the gun. Damn! Did what? Did he give him the gun to shoot her, or he just? That's unclear. Unclear. There's a lot of speculation right now. It, it doesn't matter. The whole simple point is that he gave him the weapon. So he's complicit at that point. So yeah. it doesn't okay, matter. but okay, but I want y'all to understand this. It's wrong all the way around, from the top to the bottom. And what I mean by that is they are they they don't have strict gun laws. Every and anybody, Marvin, you know it. If you in Atlanta, you carrying a gun. Everybody is carrying a gun, and that's everywhere. And it's these laws that's letting people say, "Okay, it's okay to carry a gun." This and that. And 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 honestly, I want people to understand that guns don't kill people. People do, but you get guns in that when you give crazy people and and mentally unstable people these weapons. They're going to do the, the inevitable. And that's what's going. That's the problem with society. A lot of us are mentally ill. For example, look at Marvin wearing a skull cap inside. A lot of us are mentally <laughs> ill and we don't know what to do with ourselves. And, 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 and with our young, younger generation, believe it or not, social media is, is really dictating and coaching and being the role model for them. No matter who you are, Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, it doesn't matter. They're in front of social media that, before that, they are in front of anybody. And that is what's messing up a lot of people. Believe right. it or not, it's a school right now. I forgot the name of it. I saw it last night on the news. It's a school. I think it was a college or something. They're suing TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and something, another social media right. platform because, it, because, it's, because it's known to cause mental illness in the kids. And I believe it. Because Steve. a lot of people are being influenced by social media. Well, Steve, you know, in China, they don't though. allow all this nonsense. Huh? You're on mute, Marvin. Thank God. <laughs> Act like you're here. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> you went mute. Yeah. Go ahead. Say it again, Marvin. No, I said, you know, in a lot of, like, China, TikTok, they don't allow all this nonsense on TikTok. It's educational over there. Well, ac actually, actually, the government is trying to ban TikTok right they now. They need to. They need to. So, because so, here's the reality of it. You have a generation that's so easily influenced, and you think about it. Every time it's some different challenge, you see these idiots out here, whether it's walking on milk crates, eating damn Tide Pods. It's stupid right. act after stupid act. And you know what that does to sensible people? Because sensible people, we realize, hey, 
trying to help these this generation is not really going so well. So I'll tell you what I do. When, my, when me and my wife go out, you know what I normally do? I look at different places, different options, and I look at the menus. If anything on that menu is less than $50, I ain't going. Because yep. I know Pookie yep. and Knock Knock and all these other knuckleheads liable to be there. I go places where I know they can't afford to be. Exactly. Like, listen, if and it cost me and, and, at and, least two, $300, I ain't going. Right. And if I go, if it's expensive, I steal it. Go ahead, Justin. That's what I'm talking about, Steve. That's Steve. <laughs> no, I right. ain't stealing it. But going back, you know, it's to just football. a way of separating yourself from the nonsense. Going back to football, uh, this question uh, from Native Five: Why aren't we recruiting out of the state of Louisiana like we used to? <laughs> Louisiana has had the best athletes to me in the past 25 years. It's not Florida anymore. Alabama 7A schools also. It's because, first of all, because we had Burton Burn, we had somebody on the staff that was from Louisiana, played in Louisiana, knew, knew the area, knew what type of players to go after, knew what to say to the players, and he had a great relationship with them because he was a, a Louisiana guy and just that. Right. Just think about it. If I'm if I'm living in Florida, and and Marvin from Florida, but he a coach at Alabama. When I get to if if Marv come recruit with me, me and him got something in common. We we from Florida, so the first thing in my mind that I'm thinking is that Marvin gonna make sure I'm straight because I'm a I'm a I'm a kid from Florida, and you know what I'm saying. And he can keep me on track and tell me you know what I'm saying what to do, what not to do. You know, really basically teaching me the system and have me buy into the system and buy into the program because we have that home, that home state in common. And, and, and I just feel like if I'm get if I can, if I get homesick or anything, I can go talk to Marvin and Marvin can, you know, talk some sense into me of the good things that I can get up out of it. But, you know, Bo, it also goes back to the, the relationships that these coaches have with high school coaches. Yeah, because a lot true. of cases, man, high school coaches, if they don't want a certain coach to talk to their player, you'll never receive mail from them. You'll never even know they was trying to recruit you. If your high school really? coach really don't want you to know. Oh, yeah. I found out after the fact that there were several schools that were trying to recruit me. But my coach was like, nah, he ain't even finna talk to y'all because he but because he basically knew what I wanted. And he knew, you know, okay, oh, this okay. kid right here. He's going, you know, if it ain't one of the top, you know, 10 schools in the country, SEC. It's a, so a lot of other schools, when they would come talk, try to talk to me, other people didn't even let them talk to me. I didn't even know. Yeah. I found out after the fact, you know, his coaches would tell me, yeah, we tried to talk to you, but the coach wasn't having it. So a lot of these coaches, man, they, 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 they do what's best for them. Because a lot of high school coaches get kickbacks, whether y'all want to admit it or not. Yeah, they do. And 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 and, and to piggyback off what you said, Marvin, man, I was hell doing recruiting. My coach, man, coach, coach Smith used to be so mad at me, man. Cause look, one thing I I'm from the country. I ain't never yeah. seen any of that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Any visit, anytime a coach want me to come. Man, I was getting it. I would, I would put me four dollars in that red 2007 Honda Accord, driving straight down to the uh Auburn, hollering that Gene Chizzy and all the boys. Man, I was going down on so many times, man. Ruben, so my my coat called my my high school coat called me and said, Man, what are you doing? I said, I'm going down here to weigh up all my options. He said, man, these people will burn down your house. I said, I got people that can burn down there. You know, oh my God, this but, guy's but so but, but, but you know check this out, check this out, check this out, Mar. It, it, it get even better. He called my mama. He he told me he told my mama that I couldn't drive down to the arbor and get what my mama told him. He can go wherever his car take him. But you got to understand, it's so many politics. I was fortunate enough to where I got to see a lot of the politics of recruiting, man, because I have older cousins that played Division One football. I got a lot of friends that played Division One, And it was straight up told to me and my family, like, you know, if you leave and go to another school other than Alabama, you can't come back home, right? And that's so true because I got friends and family members that played at other SEC schools that when they tried to come back to Tuscaloosa, it was a no-go, bro. No, you no love, and all of them actually end up moving back to the states that they went and played college ball in because when they came Justin back, Alabama, up. it was no Justin, love, bro. Justin, so, pin up, Justin, keep your pin up, please. <laughs> all right, hey, saying? we got a celebrity on this. Coach Joe Kahn is here in the chat. We just got to stop that little inside trap. 
<laughs> but Marv, I, I seriously want to ask this question to you. And of course, you guys can follow up. And this is for the people in the chat too. Letting Pete Golden go. How does this reset the culture? How does this cool. I guess, allow the make his ass quit culture to be reinserted? How That's a damn good question. Well, you know, I've always said that college kids play to the personality of their defensive coordinator. You know? I agree. And if you, you look at most successful coordinators, whether it's Jeremy Pruitt, uh, 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 Will Muschamp, Kirby Smart, you know, um, uh, Carl Torbush, Ellis Johnson, I can go down the list of all these great defense, D'Amico Ryans, all these guys are high-energy guys that fuel their players through their own emotions, man. They teach them the game, and they see the game in a way that most can't see it in. You got to have a combination of all those things to be a great defensive coordinator. It does no good for you to see the field and know what's coming if you can't teach that to the kids, if you can't uh -huh. motivate the kids and get them to go out there and play a high energy game. If you didn't hear Kirby Smart's pregame speech to Georgia, you missed one hell of a speech. Mm -hmm. That's what you need in a defensive coordinator and a coach. Somebody's going to give you that level of energy right there. Now, at what point in your life do you ever think you can hear Pete talk to a team like that? Never. And as a defensive player, that's the kind of coach you want to play. Yep. For. I agree. I want to feed I off his energy and he going to teach you to play the game. Man, please. All right. Oh, yeah. Yep. I agree 100 percent. And I don't agree with nothing Marvin says, but I agree with that. <laughs> Kirby, Kirby's pregame speech and his halftime speech. He ain't cut him no slack at halftime either. No. Kirby. Hey. Oh. That's who you, you know what? Play. When they were, you know yeah. what? When they were going yeah. in, when they, when they were going in at halftime, you could hear Kirby's mouth saying, "It's still zero to zero, zero to zero. You oh, hearing yeah. that? That was the motto. That was the motto at Alabama. And and and, and, and at halftime, someone who who else used to go out with Kirby, Bo Davis. Bo Davis was getting your ass like no other, and would have you fired up, ready to go out there and and knock a nick. No, no. Yeah, don't, oh, you know, don't use that please. word. Don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody <laughs> get out. <laughs> we almost got. We almost we got, almost got, got. In the HR. The HR. We almost the got. Hey, hey, we just got a call. Hey, that's how I was. I'm on the, I'm, hey. I'm on the offensive side, and I'm hearing Bo Davis, and he got me ready to, you know what I'm saying? Go out there and take somebody's mm -hmm. heart out and stick it in upside down. Hey man, listen. But what you're not gonna do, Bo, is get is get my NIL deal with Stacey Allen. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. So you don't. Hey. You're not gonna do that, bro. It looked like you had them since 2006. These the first go back to '76. Hey man, that, hey, that's hey, the Pastor these, Sevens right there. These are the Pastor Ones. The Pastor. Oh, the <laughs> The crooked pastor ones. The crooked pastor ones. It's the, oh, you the pastor that taking up but, all the money and putting it in your pocket going to buy a Rolls Royce. <laughs> exactly. But Marvin, you actually inspired me to do some some research. I think uh, a couple of times you brought up some stats as far as how Pete Golden's defenses did against elite teams. And I picked a couple of games. Tennessee uh, this year, Ole Miss 2020, Florida 2020, LSU 2019, hey, even Arkansas 2021. The average yards allowed, total yards allowed in those games was 537. The average wow. passing yards was 389 yards passing. I didn't bring up the rushing stats, but against elite offenses, our offenses that were considered some of the best in the country, we did not perform at all. And, and the top 10 defensive ranking that we had is a, is a little bit skewed. A lot of those numbers were from the less than opponents we played. Yeah. And – to add to your point, another thing you didn't bring up is the, the sacks. We had very few sacks in all of those games, which contributed to to the, the high passing yards. And, yep. again, when a team can pass the ball like that, you know we, they got to run the ball. Because, again, when a team is hitting you for four, 500 yards a game passing, 300 yards a game passing, you got to play six or seven DBs. When you're playing six, seven DBs, now I'm going to run it down your throat at that point. So, I, you I'm, know, the, the ineptness on the back end, and on the front end, puts the linebackers in a compromised position, and it was just a total pitfall all around. That but defense Marvin. has done this the last four years. It has progressively gotten worse. There was no domination against any top ten, top five opponent. What top five opponent did we dominate? Okay, you'll say we just 
whooped Kansas State, who was the Big 12 champion, who the, 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 the they sent TCU to the playoff, who just got smoked by Georgia. So I'm like, again, when we played real competition, our defense sucked. Hey, man, let me say this too, man. Uh, well, I think one time the defense looked pretty decent when we played Ohio State in the national championship. Was Pete Golden there then? Yes, that's 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 the only time I really saw him look decent against a, a a a really good elite team. And honestly, man, I was really I was totally embarrassed when we played Tennessee because if you looked at Tennessee's quarterback, he was totally clean, like he didn't even play the game. No, 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 no grass stains, no grass in the corner of the helmet, no nothing. He stood up this the whole defense. game. This defense has lacked the nastiness and the physicality that most great defenses are known for. When you think of a great defense, you're thinking about enforcers, physical. I mean, you're talking about giving up probably 1.9 to 2.3 yards per, per carry on the run. Pass plays, you're talking about maybe four to seven yards per, per completion on pass attempts. You, you, you're going to see a high level of, of three and outs. All the things that we didn't see the past few years while Pete was there. When have we just physically went out there and dominated the team, which is multiple three and out, three and out, three and out? When have we went out there and the team been crossed the fifty yard line on us? It hadn't happened under Pete. It hadn't happened since two thousand. And, and, and not only that, Marvin. And while the defense was stopping people, they looked like they were having fun, and they looked like they knew what they were doing. They came. Yeah. The, the defenses, the defenses went out there, and they looked like they had a purpose. And their purpose wasn't just to stop the other team; it was to intimidate and punish them and have fun while doing it. Yeah, he go to the defense. It's like stop them if you can. Everybody's yeah. confused. Okay, when you, when you when you when you go out there and you know what you're doing, you having fun. But if you go out there and you second guessing. You ain't you you ain't gonna play to your full potential because you second guessing yourself about is you right or wrong? Should I do this? Should I not? Should I do this? Should I not? If you gonna mess up, mess up going full speed so it won't look like you mess up. This year we looked at like we was in training camp, like we were being cool. learning, yeah. learning exactly. And you didn't see on the field accountability either, like you saw in those defenses when you were there, Bo. And I want to pose this question to you. I know you don't really talk about coaches. Let's talk about culture. How important is the culture in terms of this next coaching hire? The culture, the culture is very important. And like Marv been saying all week, your player is a reflection of your coaches. That's just like how Cole Burns. That's why the stable of running back that we had, all of us had the same type of style but we had our own style that we put in it because of how Coach Byrne coached or how hard he was on us, knowing telling us that MF got to pay to tackle us. We not the ones that getting tackled. We tackling them, meaning we running over them. Look at Kirby Smart, Kirby Smart how he had the defense. A lot of mean, nasty guys, guys that – didn't give a f about what go on going out there playing they hard out run through a brick wall and then just you know look at the db Kosabe and, and 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 the guy that had went to oakland they db with mika fitpatrick eddie jackson uh avery all these guys yep. playing knowing what they doing because of the type of coaches that they had but if you got a coach out there and he's not uh, basically fully putting putting potential towards you or uh, the work towards the team and or towards towards his position, letting them know that this is the standard, this is how it's going to be. If you don't like it, you can go to another school because we can win without you. If you ain't got no coaches in there that's saying that we can win without you and we don't need your ass, and, and then it ain't going to be done right. Yo, the, 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 players hey, gonna, well, the players gonna run over the position coach. Well, and when we were playing, that wasn't happening. If our next middle linebacker don't have a full beard and own a bunch of skull caps, I don't want it. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. You hey, hey man, man, you know what? On, I believe, on, I believe, on, I believe on, this guy, on, Black, Blackshire, Blackshire. Kendrick, Kendrick Blackshire, yeah. He got a smoke cigarette. 
got some cigarettes. <laughs> hey, 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 Steven. Hey, hey, Steven. <laughs> Steven, so, so what, what's, what, what's up on uh, Black Kendrick Blackshear? What's up on him? Kendrick, Kendrick Blackshear, middle linebacker. Middle linebacker. He I, just hey, had man, health, I saw, health I, issues last I saw year. his Marvin. Marvin, I'm going to tell you something. You might want to keep your eye on this guy. This guy is a bruiser, dude. Does he have a beard? Yes. I, I think I think he, he looks cut like it. he's thirty five years old. He cut it. He cut it. <laughs> he literally looks like he's thirty five years old right now. So, so, somebody in the comments said Freddie Kitchens for offensive offensive yeah, coordinator. No, listen, he, listen he had a quarterback this. throwing the ball ball too hard. No, he'll no. Well, I seen his work in 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 Cleveland. That wasn't the best of work. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I, I, I I've 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 seen. I've seen his work on the field too. Somebody can do a five yard hitch and he's throwing the ball hard as he and knock his whole hand off. Like, no, sir. I don't <laughs> think we're gonna do that. So, so Mar, 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 what about Ty? Ty. Ty uh uh Lupus uh, um that left and went to Cleveland for the poor Tosh Lapoy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like Tosh. Why like we Tosh. You know, why we can't bring him back? I wouldn't mind bringing Tosh back. I actually like Tosh. You know, and I like the I like the, the attitude he had. He was mm -hmm. a he Marvin. Was a here's player. one. How about how about Todd Bates? Uh, I don't see Bates leaving Oklahoma no time soon. Yeah. You know, it's his first year down there, and you know him and Venables they have that relationship. They worked together for years at Clemson, and I'll say this, and this is why I I think it wouldn't work with Bates in Tuscaloosa. He coached with Dabo Sweeney for so many years, and I always tell people. What's the difference when they ask me what's the difference between uh, Coach Sweeney and, and and Coach Saban? Coach Saban, it's all business. You're going to work, work, work. With Coach Sweeney, it's family, 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 and you're going to work some along the way. Sweeney's coaches, they didn't work those long hours like they do at Alabama. So to think that Todd would go from that environment to the Alabama environment, I don't see that happening because, again, when you work for Sweeney for so many years, and I'm pretty sure Venables is the same way, where they're not burning the candlestick at both ends just to win like they do it at Alabama. Because you know, like I know, both coaches at Alabama, they live, they sleep, they breathe at the complex. The families come up for family day on Thursdays because that's most of the time when their kids and their wives see them on Thursday. They have a different restaurant come up and cater every Thursday, family day. It's not like that everywhere. So to take a guy who who coached under uh, uh, Dabo Sweeney in a more relaxed family environment where he got to go home at a decent hour and ask him to now come to Alabama and work those hours, that probably ain't going to happen. Man, hey, yeah. Quick Kirby, shout out. Man, quick Kirby, shout out. Kirby then used to come home until 3 a.m. and back up there at 7. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, we got a quick shout out to two new members, two new folks who are witnessing this wonderful show. We've got Jay Breezy and Don Parker. Welcome to the family. We greatly appreciate y'all being in the audience. Oh, thank you, Don Parker. <laughs> I don't know y'all. I don't know y'all. But you know, I, and they one of the things hmm? uh, they say you're irrelevant. Hey, 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 uh yeah, Justin, tell leave Justin. our court Justin alone. Justin, Justin. <laughs> yes, sir. Remember this. The pen to win. Just hold it up. They'll shut up. The pen to win. Gotta, <laughs> hey, we got to implement it. The pen to win. They don't know. That's that's the, the new reason, thing. The pen to win. The reason Steve know that because he used to the CEO doing it on the yard. That, that is. is the quiet. The right, go ahead, Justin. Go yeah, ahead, so Justin. One last thought in terms of the next coaching <laughs> hire. I don't want to see the integrity of the game be compromised. What I mean by that, I think the excuse of the game offensively has evolved was used way too much. Yes, excuse. I get it. Offenses have evolved. Yes, absolutely right. But it doesn't mean you can be out of position. It doesn't mean that you just forget fundamentals and forget where you're supposed to be. Right. We need to get back to the basics. I, 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 it's a simple fix. Get back to the basics of Bama football. Doing what's required to make make their ass quit. That's pretty much what I wanted to say. You know, but here's the reality of it. You know, a lot of people said that, you know, the game has changed. Defenses can't do the things they used to do. You know, you don't lock teams down anymore. Georgia did it last year. They come back again this year. They do it again to win back-to-back -back championships. They beat TCU 65-7, to largest margin of victory in college football bowl history. TCU didn't even cross the 50-yard line second half. Now, I remember mm. vividly the days of Kirby Smart working in Alabama doing the same thing to other opponents. 
So again, it's just a matter of getting the right person for the job. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Before we start to close up shop, I'm going to let y'all go around the room. Closing thoughts on Pete Golden being gone and what's ahead. Steve Brown, I'll let you start on this. Um, I, I'm saying it's about time. And I believe that it was just, I think, I, I'm with Marvin. I think it was a lot more than just him quitting and going to Ole Miss. I think he was forced out, my personal opinion. And I'm, I'm hoping that we get, we do get somebody like a Jeremy Pruden, Pruden so we can get back to what our standard is supposed to be. Because I really believe he'll bring that fieriness, that toughness, and everything else. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for somebody like Jeremy Pruitt or somebody close to it. Stephen M. Smith? The, uh, the golden experiment is over. I want two for one. I want Schumann and Pruitt. I want both of them. I want a two for one deal. So that way we have Schumann already in pocket, have Jeremy Pruitt coast the safeties. Once Schumann goes off, you have Pruitt work back up to D.C. I kind of want a two for one deal out of this thing. I'm on the same, li same lines. Bo, I'll go to you and let Marvin close up this thought. Why you got that Marvin go last? Because this is what he's been waiting on for three years. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's his time, man. Let him be great. <laughs> well, well, Justin, you know I'm the type of guy I doesn't speak on coaches. Right. We, I, I appreciate, you know, his time there at Alabama and what he have done for us, you know, in the past. I hope, you know, for a great future for him, you know, at Ole Miss, and I hope he does a great job. And I would like for us to have Jeremy Poor and Schulman, but, you know, you know, like I said before, Coach Saban doesn't hire guys who everybody want him to hire. So I hopefully his mind has changed over the last seven years. So, you know, Schulman and Pruitt will be like a two for one deal with me, like uh, with, uh, Steven said. But again, I hope the best for uh, Golden. You know, I appreciate everything he have done for the university and good luck to him um, in, on his next journey. Real quick, Maria Hale, new member. We got new, somebody new in the audience checking us out. Glad to have you here. All right, we heard the hey, Maria. We heard the politically correct version. Marvin, your turn. <laughs> man, listen, man. Hey, the politically correct version. Okay, <laughs> that's just messing, bro. Listen, man. He, he, here's the reality. When I first heard the news that it was official, here we go. That, he, that Pete was leaving. The music from the Wizard of Oz started playing in my head. You know, when they said the Wicked Witch is dead, all the yellow brick road, but the little munchkins are all like the Wicked Witch is dead. And they were all excited. You know, I was like, oh, God, we got, we got a chance to really get a real coach again. You know, and, and man, the, the, the excitement was real because here's the reality of it, man. The side that most people don't want to talk about. How many careers did Pete ruin? How much money did he cost a lot of these young men? Because you can't tell me if we've had the number one recruiting class almost every year for the last decade plus that we shouldn't have had multiple guys going in the first round the last three drafts on the defensive side of the ball. And that has not been the reality. So how many of these kids' futures did he really piss down the toilet with his lack thereof coaching? And I'm going to call it exactly what it is. Because, again, they were often confused, out of place. Physicality wasn't there. Physically whooped and dominated. And when NFL coaches and scouts turn on that tape, that tape was not good. I have several friends that coach and scout in the NFL. I heard it direct from a horse's mouth. The film was not good. So I just hated for all those young men whose talent he pissed down the toilet and cost them money. Because that's the reality. You know, most of these kids, they got a two- or three-year window to get their money. So if yeah. Pete was your defensive coordinator the entire time you were there, the likelihood of you getting max value of what you should have gotten yeah, is missed low, up. low, low. You've missed the boat on that. But that goes back to coaching. So that and, that and that's another reason why I was so adamant about getting a real coach in there, one that's going to make sure that these kids are getting what they need to be successful because they haven't been getting that the past three, four years since Pete has been the defensive coordinator. So I'm extremely excited to see him move on to whatever hey. chapter he's moving on to. Now hey, Marvin, can I say something? Can I say something real quick? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Jeff. I got to say this. I, again, I don't never agree with Marvin, but I cannot agree more with Marvin because I didn't want to say anything, but I had a personal P. 
Pete Golding experience, and this is dead ass serious. Do you remember when I had the pictures of me going to Nick Saban's office and, yes. and to the and I had the I, had, I even put on Saban's hat? Yeah, I did that. I stretched it. So if you see his hat, <laughs> kind of, I stretched it. But I met Pete Golden, and he was the nicest guy. And I'm like, I said to myself, this guy's too nice to be a defense coordinator. He was the nicest guy. And what got me, we were talking. He was eating pie, and he invited me in for a piece of pie. I'm like, this motherfucker too nice. I, it just, he just too nice. <laughs> he, he offered me a slice of pie. He, I swear, I bullshit you not. He offered me a slice. Of, I'm like, yeah, this guy's too nice to be a. He's the one of the nicest guys ever. Too, but I think his him being nice like that, it he don't he translates it to the field, and 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 and, and it goes back to what you're saying, Marvin. Players are the complete, uh, 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 the same as their coach. The same attitude they present. The coaches, the 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 the, the, the players gonna have that same attitude. The the now, same Steve attitude. And I'll say this: No great defensive coordinator is offering you no damn pie. Forgive my language, because here's the reality. He offered me a piece of pie. No, here's here's the reality, (laughs) Steve. You know what great defensive coordinators probably gonna offer you a dip, and you'll see them on the field for three, four hours straight and not speak one time. And I'm like, I don't know what you're doing with this tobacco, but you got to be one (laughs) tough sob to have a dip in your mouth for three hours and never speak. But wait a minute, Mark. Mark, Mark, wait, Mark, 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 hold on, Mark. Now the pie was Mark. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The pie was good. Now you can't take that away. The pie was damn good. The pen is up. Did you pay your tab at at the Moonwink, Steve? (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> but, hey, but, but real in all quick. I kid you not, though. When you see a great, most great defense court, a lot of times they have a dip in their mouth for three, four hours and won't spit one time. The and pen is up. Bro. I see the pen up, but I'm going to finish my point. Bro. You know, because here's the thing about it. Most defensive coordinators, it's all about mental toughness with them. And they're going to do everything in their power to get you to be mentally tough because in that fourth quarter, when that game is on the line and you're tired, you got to dig real deep to finish that game. We got three pins up, Mar. I ain't worried about them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Mar, Listen, the, the before somebody Mar, else Mar, gets Mar, this. I game on the line and had to Shut make up. <laughs> go ahead, Bo. Go, I mean, go ahead. Either go one ahead. of them been on the field go. in the fourth quarter with the game on the line. No. I'm go ahead, go, Justin. I'm about to go training day on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, Stephen M. Smith, we have some breaking news. <laughs> Linebacker Demoy Kennedy has entered the transfer portal. Before we start to move on to closing segment, please, in one minute or less, tell us what losing this man means to our defense. Get your inhaler first. You get to take a deep breath. Come on, man. Core was a core special teams guy, but inside linebacker room, two pack man. You got Blackshire, Campbell, Murphy, Jefferson, all them guys. It was going to be tough on DeMoy to see the field as an inside linebacker. I don't believe our inside linebacker room was too packed. If Henry Toa Toa was our damn starter. That room, we had to be – it couldn't have been – it had to be way more empty chairs than bodies in that room. Hey man, hey man, hey man, hey man, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, before we end this, I just want to say that to, you said DeMoy. Anybody that hits the transfer for, for portal, the only thing I can say to you is bye. <laughs> we, we're about the Bama standard. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye. Yep. That's all we got to say. All right. Well, closing Steve, segment. If they was playing toe toe over me, I probably would have hit the portal too. Man, my God. Like, <laughs> closing <laughs> segment. <laughs> Go ahead, <Jeff>. <laughs> 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 Let's go around the room. Tell everybody what's next for you guys. Steve, we'll start with you. Uh, what's going on this weekend? How can people um, be a part of it? What I, you got next? I'll be I got, able to uh, bag of course, tomatoes. I got two uh, comedy shows this week in Atlanta. Uh, my very own Make You Laugh monthly comedy show for the grown and sex. We got one Thursday, and then we got one Saturday. And I think that that's the one Marvin's going to be attending. And I just want y'all to know he's going to leave the extra mad. Because, yeah, I'm on his ass. <laughs> and I'm bringing the pins. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen M. Smith, what you got coming on tomorrow night for Emma Own Words? Uh, Coordinator talk. Um, who gonna be? Who can be the DC? Who can be the OC? Because people are not gonna drop that conversation until somebody hired. And then on top of that, you know, the, the new inside linebackers coach Austin Armstrong, who's in here from Southern Miss. You know what? Can- <laughs> 
do can he be a step up from Pete Golden? Praying he can. All right. Marvin, what you got up next? All right. So, you know, of course I got my book, you know, 40 plus strong.com, all the other stuff. You can find a copy of my book. The link is on my Instagram page. You can find that all that. But that ain't what I really want to talk about right now. Last week, I lost one of my very, very close friends and former teammates, Ahmad Galloway. That, to get that phone call 20 minutes before kickoff to the national championship game, I probably cried from that point until the third quarter. And I didn't even watch the first half of the game because I was so heartbroken and just hurt, man. So his his funeral is going to be next Monday, the 23rd. We're going to do a tribute show for him on the 24th. So I'm going to go ahead and put it out there now. I want y'all to donate, light up the chat, do whatever you got to do. Give whatever you can give in this super chat because I want the Bama Standard to do something nice for his son and his daughter. So I'm giving y'all a week's notice now. Get your checkbooks, get your wallets out, whatever you got to do next Tuesday because I really want us to do something nice for this fella's kids, man, because he clocked out at 42 years old. That ain't, that's a hard pill to swallow. Right. Absolutely. And you took the words right out of my mouth. So yeah, next week, everybody show up. This is going to be one of the biggest shows and it's for a great cause. And as Marvin said, I haven't talked to Marvin uh, about this quite yet, but yes, everything that we earn from this show goes directly to the family. We don't see any of it. TDA doesn't see any of it. It's going to help them and to carry on his legacy. We're going to have former teammates coming on, uh, sharing stories, speaking on his behalf. So definitely check it uh, in as far as that goes. And if anybody who had a relationship with Ahmad, please be in the chat and, and let us know what you think, what you feel. It's going to be a, a special time. So I encourage everybody, please. We have 408 people right now in the chat. Come back next week. Show up. I appreciate that, Marvin. Thank you for that. <coughs> Bo Scarborough, what's going on with you? How does people find you? And what's on the docket tomorrow night for developmental focus points? Well, at first, I just want to give my condolences to Marvin and uh, his friends, family. Uh, I want to, you know, y'all going to be in my prayers. Thank and um, tomorrow, 7.30, uh, Central Time. Um, we have uh, Glenn Coffee on. He's going to tell his story, you know, give us some insight of, uh, you know, um, how he only did one season in the NFL. And um, I got the cameo uh, still going and the uh, clothing line is still up. So um, make sure you tune in tomorrow at 7.30 Central Time for Glenn Coffee. He has an uh, amazing story to tell how he got drafted in the third round. I only did one year. And um, he um, was the only guy in the locker room before he went out to practice. And he just said he just sat there and was thinking. And, you know, he just said it wasn't it wasn't it for him. So, you know, he just left and went home. So I will um, let him fill in his story to y'all tomorrow at, se and, um, at 730 Central again. So, yeah, make sure y'all tune in and make sure you uh, go to that website, boscarborough.com. And both Scarborough also on cameo. I got to say thank you to Brooke, though, for getting the yes. party started early for my boy. Brooke, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, again, everything from uh, starting with Brooke's donation up to the next Tuesday is all going to the family. Because, again, I just want his kids to know. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. That, that means a lot. Yeah, great show, gentlemen. Looking forward to next week, the celebration of Ahmad's life. But that'll do it for all of us here at the Bama Standard. Everyone have a good night, and we'll see everyone tomorrow night on Bo's show, the developmental focus points on the Bama Standard YouTube channel. Hit that like button on the way out, folks. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll tide.